Listen, I had a dream also, another dream, and in this dream, in this dream, uh, me and my wife, we were in uh, the basement of a building. We were in the basement of a building, and there was uh, many skeletons. There was many uh, dead bodies or skeletons. I don't say dead bodies. There were many skeletons, okay, dry bones. There were a lot of skeletons that were moving around. They had no eyes in their so the socket of their eyes. They had no flesh on their bones. Yet the skeletons were living. They were breathing. So I saw these skeletons laying on the ground. They were alive. That is the funny thing that all the skeletons that I saw in this vision, they were so alive. They had no flesh in the bones, no eyes in the socket. Yet the frame of this skeleton, the frame of the bodies were moving around. All right. And I started asking my wife in this dream, I was saying, uh, is it possible for these things to be alive? It looks horrible. They have no flesh on their bones. It, it looks like there's no more life. There's no flesh on them. Yet the skeletons are moving around and they were talking. They were talking and they had life and they were pleading to be helped. And in this dream, I wanted to, I was saying, Lord, let's just pray for them to have a peaceful death so that they don't have to go through this. This is painful. This is hard to watch. I was struggling with how can somebody live when they have no flesh in their bones and the skeleton, the frame is the only thing that's remaining there. Yet they are alive. And I remember my wife was telling me in this dream that remember the, the dry bones, remember the value of the dry bones how the dry bones came alive on the valley of the dry bones. And I woke up from this dream and I started thinking about that, that these skeletons were dead on the outside, yet alive in the inside. Look like death on the outside, yet alive within them. There was life. And this is what the Lord said, uh, the valley of the dry bones. Remember the valley of the dry bones. Remember Elisha's tomb. Uh, do not rule out God in your situation. Though it looks dead and decayed, God can still breathe upon your vision, your life, and bring it back to life. Do not give up even if it looks like it's dead. Do not give up even if it's looking like it's dying. Now, this skeleton was still moving and talking even though it had no flesh or even eyes. The Lord asked me, can this dead thing live again? Can these dry bones live again? Can the breath of life infuse life in these things and create their flesh again? And I was struggling with it. And the Lord said, that is the anointing that is bringing upon the church. Okay? If you are willing, if you are willing to live, if there's even a willingness of life to live in you, God will keep you alive. If you're sick and you're on your deathbed and you're watching this video, if there's even a, 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 a life in you, a willingness, a willingness to live, that's what God says. If you're willing to leave, those skeletons looked dead, but inside of them, there was the breath of life on the nostrils. There was a breath of life of God. Why? Because they were willing to leave. This is what God says. If you're willing, if there's even a willingness to live within you, then God's breath can spark a miracle for you. If there's even a willingness to live within you, then God's breath can spark a miracle for you. If you're willing and obedient, you shall eat of the land. Okay? You shall eat of the land. God is bringing his people from the graves bringing you out of your bondage, filling you with the Spirit, giving you a new life, settling you in, a, in your own land. God is settling you in your own land. In Proverbs 14.30, the soundness of the soul is the life of the flesh. Listen to that. The soundness of the soul is the life of the flesh. No wonder the scripture says, Beloved, I desire that you prosper. Scripture says, Beloved, I desire that you prosper even as your soul prospers. And listen to this. Your soul has to prosper. If your soul is prosperous, it doesn't matter anything else. God's going to entrust you with anything if your soul is prosperous. Listen to Proverbs 14, 30. A sound soul is the life of the flesh. When your soul is right, healing will flow to your body. When your soul is right, the power of God will touch your frame and God will affect your members. But envy rottens the bones. Don't be envious of people as they prosper. God will bring you out. You're in a season of learning, learning to embrace the future. Learn it now, learn it well. Envy kills the anointing. Don't be envious of other people's anointing. Trust God to give you your own anointing. In Psalms 35, 10, it says, All my bones will say to the Lord, Who is like you, who delivers the afflicted, 
who is strong for him. Listen, God's bringing you out of your graves. Lazarus is rising from the grave. 